I'm going to preface this video by mentioning that I have a deep dive video available on my channel that discusses my mounting system for the Pitbull trailer restraint system in great detail, including its general discussion for its purpose, my design considerations, the fabrication process, which is retrospective only, and fitment and installation into the van. If you're interested in learning more about my mounting system that I use for the van, please see the video I've linked in the description below. Okay, let's get into today's video, which is completing my track day loadout in my 2023 Mercedes-Benz Cargo 144-inch wheelbase high roof sprinter van. So this is my 2023 Mercedes-Benz 144-inch high roof sprinter van. The 144-inch wheelbase is the smaller of the two wheelbases, the other one being 170 inches, which adds I think a foot onto the section behind the rear wheel and a foot in between the front and rear wheel. I went with the 144 wheelbase because I don't plan on camping or sleeping in this van, only transporting motorcycles securely and discreetly along with all of my track day. This van, as you'll see later on in this video, will fit two motorcycles, in my case a 600cc and a 400cc motorcycle, as well as spare wheels four stands, and all of my track day material that I need, such as my easy up, my gear, tools to repair or adjust the motorcycles, seats, cooler, etc. I think that the 144 inch wheelbase sprinter is ideal for the average track day enthusiast because it's not so unwieldy that it's difficult to drive around in urban environments or cities. It's very easy to park. It has amazing 360 degree cameras that allow me to see every angle for when I'm maneuvering this vehicle in tight places. It is not the worst on gas mileage. It's not the best either. It's fully enclosed. In my case, it is a windowless and it is perfect for operating and moving motorcycles between my house, tracks, and hotels. My van in particular is accommodated with the premium and comfort package, so the seats are adjustable. There is the smaller of the two LED touchscreens in the center console over there. It has a lot of amenities in it, AC, extra storage compartments, very comfortable. I also opted for a doorless partition, although I could have gone with the door. Haven't decided whether or not that was a mistake or not. I don't really think I could use the door considering how I end up loading the van, but it would have been nice to have regardless. It comfortably sits two people. I went with the non bench layout because then the seats can't be adjustable. And I also went with the parking package. So I have a 360 degree camera, front, rear and side view. The only item which I wish I had on this van that I didn't option it out with, which was a mistake on mine, was a blind spot indicator, which would normally show up on the mirror itself. So I have to just use the smaller mirrors to check my blind spots. Not the biggest deal, but something I wish I had done. This is the Sprinter van in its absolute purest form, meaning the least amount of material inside of it. So from this point on, I will load it with my track day material and my motorcycles. And I'll show you that process and how everything fits in, what I do for wall storage and how I fit everything into this van. So let's discuss wall storage first. On this wall, I keep two rain tires for my 400cc motorcycle, RC390. And then further towards the door, where those orange cam straps are, I keep a front and rear stand. So I'll show you how that all mounts up now. There's an O-ring on L-Track. It's attached to a carabiner with a Velcro strap. This is a size 36 Husky from Home Depot. Those sell similar ones from Velcro. Uh, the larger ones fit the diameter of the wheel pretty well. Presumably you could go with a smaller one for the front wheel. I did not, so I just have some slack on it. Not the end of the world. I have the brake discs facing outward because that's how I end up securing them to the wall using a dynamic rubber strap. 
I run it from one O-ring to another, and then I put the strap over the rotor behind it on the spokes. That stops it from moving. For one of the four rear stands that I bring, I will fit it on these two J hooks, which also are attached to the upper L track. It's a pretty tight fit, like so. And then I'll run a large strap over the two legs of the rear stand, secure it to the wall, like so. And these will attach to two O-rings on the bottom L track. And by the way, these L tracks come factory from Mercedes. Didn't have to install them aftermarket, although certainly options to do so. On the opposite wall is the same concept. I run a spare wheel for my 600. So it's just a regular wheel. The other two are reins for the 390. And it's going to get secured in the same fashion. Similarly, my second rear stand fit right here and will also be secured in the same manner with a strap over the legs. Next is attaching the ramps to load the bikes for the van. So I use two heavy duty ramps from Black Widow. They're the big boy ramps. They're rated for 750 pounds individually, which is way overkill. But the reason that I use two of them is because it reduces my margin of error when loading the bikes. Because when you unload the bikes, sometimes the wheel will cock from one side to another. And if you run off this ramp, the singular ramp, you're in big trouble. With two of them, you will never run off them unless you really do something wrong. And because of that peace of mind, I run two of them. They store very neatly and securely in the van, which I'll show you after. But for right now, I'm gonna attach them to the van so that we can load the motorcycles. So I've put one down and now I'll do the other. the way these ramps will attach. There's a bracket that's going to attach both of them together, which I'll do in a moment, but they'll also just strap the cam straps to the underside of the van, secure them from falling away from it in the event that the ramp slips. So we'll do the brackets now. Black Widow recommends checking from the top. The thing about these ramps are they're not always a flush fit between these two metal pieces, so sometimes it's hard to get the bracket exactly the second from the top. I generally just put it where I can fit it. Perfect. Now I'll just pull the cam straps tight. And the ramps are fully secured to the bed of the van. Before getting ready to load the bikes, we have to attach the latches to the Pitbull TRS. They attach from the inside outward. They've got a spring latched mechanism that anchors into this hole that keeps them secure underneath these bolts. And they just slide in. I've already got my TRS brackets loaded up to both my track bikes, but in case you're not aware, these brackets are universal and the unique part are these pins that attach to the axle on either side, depending on what bike you have and what year the bike is. You can purchase those separately from Pitbull. And then they've got this little expand to keep it out of the way when you're loading the bike, which we're about to do. So for me, 
I absolutely do not ride them up these ramps, even though I'm sure they're capable of doing it. I will simply turn the bikes on and clutch them up the ramp into their respective spots. I load the 600 first, that one's offset more towards the back, and then the 400cc afterward. Loading this one is a little bit more awkward because I have to be on the throttle and brake side, and so I'm opposite of the clutch kicks in at first. So I've got to do all that with my hand leaned over the bike initially, and then operate from that point. have the bike more or less inside the van and it helps to load it on a slight downhill to decrease the angle and also help the rolling speed. I keep the bike in first to stop it from rolling so I don't have to constantly hold the brake in order to keep the bike steady. I will detach the bracket from the uh, subframe. I'll drop it down and then I will slowly load the bike in. Something to note is that oftentimes you won't get it exactly right Ways. So it takes sometimes a little finagling, but this one it looks like I pretty much got it spot on. So because I'm off on this side, the way you correct this is by taking the front and lifting it towards the left, pulling the front of the bike left. And that's going to bring this, this portion of the wheel forward. So I'm going to do that right now and you'll watch the latch go right into place. Okay, so I moved it towards the left and now that should close. That one closes as well. A little bit more resistance, but it's not a problem. You pin them through to safety then. And that's one of two bikes loaded. So we're gonna move the ramps now, just over a little bit, and load the second bike. Just a little. Because they're bracketed together, We'll come all together pretty much. And then now it's time to load the second bike. Follow the same exact process as before. Concept as before, I leave the bike in first gear. I'll have to hold the brake to keep it steady. I will undo the bracket, let it come to the ground, and then wheel the bike forward slowly into the bracket or into the stand. And again, sometimes it's hard to get it perfect every time. It's not the worst, but not the greatest, so I'll just shimmy it over a little bit. And that should be it. One, two. Pin it in place. Secure. So that is two motorcycles loaded into the Sprinter van, 144 high roof with relatively little to no drama at all using the TRS and the custom floor made out of the butcher block that I have described. Both bikes fit in pretty well. Let me turn this guy off. Do the wall storage ahead of time because it's just easier and the bikes can roll in and out of here with everything that I have on the walls currently. I still have to load the front stands, which will go on these two lower brackets right here. Here's just the inside view. It's important to measure it out and make sure that you have enough clearance from the walls and in between the bikes, I have them offset. Wouldn't call it totally scientific, but pretty much the most effective way possible where I have them as far back to the butcher board as I can. So I'm using the least amount of space here as possible. Also making sure it's not so far back that it could compromise the structural integrity. The handlebars will stay turned and the two bikes fit in pretty seamlessly. This entire area is reserved for all of my gear. It looks like a lot of room, it is a lot of room, but it ends up being a pretty tight fit because I end up taking a fairly large toolbox, which I'll show you how that's all set up. So to secure the ramps inside of the van, I'll use two cam straps as well as the L-Track. What you can't see here is there's another J-hook 
further inside. These serve as lateral movement monitors for the ramp. So when they're upright against the wall in this position, as you'll see momentarily, the ramp closes the wall is unable to shift side to side against the wall because it's trapped between two J hooks. That's critical in this setup because without that, there's a lot less stability when they're strapped to the wall. And so I've got two O-rings that I'm gonna attach them to. This cam strap will go right up here and it'll secure the top of the ramp. The ramps aren't light, but they're still manageable with one person. And with the plane, no ducking or anything that you're hitting your head or hitting the ramp against the ceiling. So to put them in here, I'll start with one. Kind of canted that way because otherwise it's going to fall forward when I put a flush against the wall. So as you can see now where this ramp is positioned, I'm not really sacrificing the storage area back here. I'm just using the last bit of wall space against and on the inside of this motorcycle. So in my mind, it's as efficient as I can get. And that's also the reason why I can only store one large tire on this wall because these ramps are going to take up the other portion of it. So let me get these in place now. Flush up against the wall. So let me just take you in for a slightly closer look. So as I mentioned, O-ring to O-ring, straight across, there's the J-hook, there's the other J-hook, they're not going anywhere. From where the front of the motorcycle tires are, like I'm not really sacrificing much, if anything. I'm sacrificing wall space, I could run another wheel here potentially, but that's not the end of the world. And on this side, it's full. So now I'm gonna do the two front stands. So in order to make them fit, I remove from the pit bull stand one of these front stand caliper holders. And the reason I do the front stands lower rather than the rear stands is one, the front stands are smaller in overall width from arm to arm. And second of all, these are much easier to remove. The rear stands, you have to unscrew a screw. These ones, you just pull out this little safety pin and that's it. And then I will simply drop it into place as you can see. That, if the caliper holder was there, would not fit against there, but because it is there, there's no problem. Remove the inside caliper holder, which is just a single safety pin. Lift it up. So at this point, I have successfully stored four stands on the wall. Three wheels, although the fourth wheel will be behind the ramps. I just took them down to bring the ramps in. Two motorcycles on a TRS that is not mounted to the floor of the van, but is very secure. I'm gonna save you the trouble of watching what and how I load into this section. I think that's totally subjective. First of all, it depends on what you bring. Second of all, I run, and I'll show you on camera, a large tool chest that will sit right in here, facing towards me. And then behind it is where I store all of my boxes. I stack them almost to that window, table up against the wall, easy up against the ramp right over there, and then cooler in this center place. And this entire area is used up, but it's really up to you as to how you want to orient that. As you can see, it's not maybe the most efficient, but it's pretty efficient in terms of space utilization and available remaining space. I would say it's preferable. Keep in mind, this is the shorter van. This is the 144 wheelbase. By the way, this setup gets that much easier with one bike. I mean, just imagine two of those wheels gone, two of those stands gone, one bike gone, like you have all of that area. You could easily camp, sleep, do whatever, store all of your other equipment in this bike. I run two bikes, certainly don't need to be doing that, but I'm just demonstrating that a 144 Sprinter van is perfectly capable of transporting two motorcycles, ramps, wheels, stands, and all of your gear and tools that you can fit in this area. And then you can put all of your personal belongings. You have a huge storage space in here. Enclosed trailers are great but I personally am not a trailer person. I live in the Northeast where we have parkways and you can't take trailers on the parkways, but you can take these vans. I have zero restrictions as to where I can go with this. The height is only eight feet, six inches. This van could go from empty to pack in one hour and ready for a track day. And that includes removing and putting this board in, which I typically just leave in. Food for thought, if you're considering a Sprinter van build, I'm a huge proponent of it. I think that this is the preferred method in regard to transporting motorcycles to and from the track. And then because I'm a hotel person, not a camping, 
racing person, I could either one, leave all of my equipment at the track, or two, in 35 minutes, load at least the bikes up into the van, have it completely enclosed, drive it to a hotel, park it there, and not have to worry about someone stealing my trailer or stealing my bikes because it's windowless and it's completely discreet. I think that my setup, for those that are interested in transporting with TRS one or two bikes that don't want to permanently adjust their van, this is a reasonable solution. So as promised, Here's a view of the van when it's fully loaded. As I mentioned, I spared you the trouble of me loading my specific loadout, but here's the large tool chest that I mentioned, which I keep in the van and take with me to track days. I fit a cooler, a smaller toolbox, which I take with me directly on my table in the track. Can't see it behind there, but there's a chair and a table. Hang my suits from the walls, tires, easy up and boxes. Typically these have things like tronics, gloves, boots, chain cleaning items, spare parts, and additional equipment like additional airbag vests and so forth. So overall, the van fits all of this gear fairly well, fairly sturdy. I don't have any issues hauling this amount of equipment with this van. I'll definitely mention that it's sluggish. I should mention that my van is a gas powered 2500 and they come in different engine sizes and configurations so i went with the gas powered rear wheel drive only this is how my end setup looks like obviously it's a little tight right now in order to unpack the bikes i've got to take out the cooler i don't have to take out those boxes but i typically have to take out the suits and the tires in order to get the ramps out to then unload the bikes once the bikes are unloaded it's pretty straightforward from that point so here again is the final view of the van with all of the bikes and equipment inside of it. It's a 144 wheelbase high roof sprinter van. It comfortably fits two bikes, enough track day equipment and spare equipment to transport you and your motorcycles anywhere you wanna go in comfort. And it can be loaded and unloaded fairly easily. The wall storage is extremely useful. The Pitbull TRS securely holds the bikes in place. It's easy to drive, pleasant, it's got Bluetooth navigation, other amenities that make it comfortable. And overall is an ideal track day enthusiast type setup, meaning that not camping, not doing race stuff where you need a lot more equipment or need additional capacity to haul, but rather would just like to take one or two motorcycles to a track and be able to not worry about space or transportation issues. Fairly easy to drive, as I mentioned, and it fits all of the equipment discreetly in a compact way, isn't difficult to load or unload. Hopefully you found this helpful and informative. If you're interested in doing a Sprinter van or a Ford Transit or something of similar nature, I think it's perfectly possible and reasonable. I know that there's not a lot of videos about pure track day vans. A lot of them straddle the differences between camping vans or transporting only one motorcycle that may or may not be for the track. In my situation, this is purely a track day hauler and it works fairly well. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll see you guys again soon, thanks.